Hello everybody, I'm Pierre Roberge and today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I usually do technical analysis on Tesla stock, the Dow Jones and the VIX and everything. I used to be a user experience designer and I cannot help but have opinions on user interfaces I see everywhere. While using Tesla's product configurator, I felt uneasy about a few things. This is a good product configurator, but I think uh, it could be a little bit better. So I will do a UX review of Tesla's product configurator. And then after that, I'll show you a little prototype of how I think we could make it better. So the first thing I would like to say is that this interface is really streamlined. This is good, but it has a drawback. We have to do a lot more clicks and scroll in order to configure our car. So if you take a look at this right side of the screen here, we see all of the choices that we can make as a potential buyer of the car. So there's a lot of scrolling happening. Let's pretend that I'm buying a car. I can choose between a Model S at 104.990 or a Model S Plaid at 135.990. When I click on these two choices, we see that there are things that are changing. We have the range, the top speed and the acceleration that is changing. We have the estimated delivery. And when I click on the Model S plant, we get some additional information at the bottom here. And if you notice at the middle here, we have a price change. I changed two things and I need to look at the top and sometimes at the bottom to see what has changed. In terms of the efficiency, in terms of the impact on the user, he has to look in three different places. This is just additional work that uh, Tesla is asking its user. If we now click on feature details, then I have information about the acceleration and the difference between Model S and Model S Plaid, which is information that I already have there at the top, as we have seen. Top speed range drivetrain, so there's nothing new here that I cannot get on that first screen. Then I get the picture of the fact that all wheel drive means that I have a motor in the front and motor in the back. That's fine. I get to see what is included in basic autopilot. Okay, this is nice. Easy charging. This is now teaching me that I can charge anywhere there is electricity. So I am right now in the product configurator. I am here to choose my future car. I am not here to be sold per se as to the advantages of having an EV and where I can charge. That should have been taken care of on some of their pages. The same thing with Sentry Mode. Tesla can record everything that's happening around the car with its cameras. This is right now not helping me make a decision between a Model S and a Model S Plaid. Adaptive suspension again, the real storage, I'm sorry, but these are nice features. This is not the point here I'm focusing on. Should I get a Model S Plaid or a regular Model S? If we go a little bit lower, here I can select the paint. If I select the blue paint, then I notice that this is costing me 1500 bucks. So if I want to know if a paint has additional cost, then I need to click on each paint. So again, we are trading multiple clicks for a streamlined interface. And a streamlined interface has only value the first time that you encounter that interface. Once you have encountered it, you have a job to do and your job is to figure out which feature do you want and at which cost you can get that feature. That's the job that we have to do. And having to click to know the price of paint is just additional work. Wheels. Let's look at the wheels. The same principle with the wheels. If I click on the wheel, then I see if it has a price or not. And here I have a learn more. So learn more. It is telling me that the current selection is all season tires. And it's telling me that if I want to buy winter wheels, I can go in the Tesla shop to get them. Tesla shop is a separate place, a separate little boutique where you can buy Tesla accessories. And I think it would be worthwhile to make this configuration experience as part of the Tesla shop experience. And in one swoop, I could configure my car, select winter tires and any other accessories that I would like to buy and then pay at the end. So I feel like Tesla should be looking at integrating these two concepts. Then I go to interior. So here I can select a white, beige or black. And I have some additional information here feature detail. So again, here Tesla is talking to me about three different displays that I can see in the car, behind the wheel, in the center console, and also in the back. This is really nice, but right now I'm trying to choose the color of the car. So why are you telling me about the audio speakers and everything? I feel like it is a little bit out of place. 
In terms of enhanced autopilot, we have already discovered in the feature detail above that there is such a thing as a basic autopilot. But if I did not go there to look at that feature, when I come here, I see that I can choose enhanced autopilot, which has these features or full self-driving capability that contains basic autopilot plus enhanced autopilot plus the traffic lights and stop sign control. But if I have not looked at the basic autopilot feature descriptions here, then I am lost as to what is this basic autopilot thing. So let's say that I want to have a little bit more information about this. I can click feature detail and then, yeah, this is very good. They are explaining it to me and there's a little animation. So this is great. This is great. This is great. This is great. If I go to self-driving, then I get the same features as in enhanced autopilot because this is what I get. Plus I get something else. I get the traffic light and stop sign control. Tesla could show that smart summon and all the previous four features are really part of enhanced and that I get them with full top driving and that the only new feature is this traffic light and stop sign. And then they are telling me that there is a full sub driving computer. That's fine. This is what I get. In terms of charging, so now here, because the home charging equipment is no longer included with the car, they are including these accessories right here. So I would personally put those accessories within the Tesla shop section that I should go into after I configure the car. And then I can move on to the payment right here. But just before, let's click on this thing over here at the bottom. So this is the price summary. So here I can choose if I want to pay cash to lease or ask for a loan. So if I choose lease, I can set my term, manual miles and down payment. And when I get rid of this, then I now see the car prices per month. One last thing is that Tesla is putting a lot of emphasis on the price after potential saving. But to be frank, if you pay $100,000 for a car, you save a little bit of gas, but I don't think that the people that can afford this car care uh, that much about what they can save in gas. If you buy a Model 3, okay, yes, I can get it. But a Model S at 100,000 bucks, to me, it seems far-fetched a little bit. But Tesla is adamant as making this a central thing because we have a selection tool here that I can choose potential saving wise. So potential saving wise, a Model S would cost me 96,590 and the purchase price being 104. But people still need to fork $104,000 when they buy the car. This could make Tesla look a little bit shady. Let's look at how I would have created this product configurator. The first thing that I would do is that I would get rid of the scrolling. The scrolling is just a hindrance, scroll, scroll, I choose a feature, scroll, scroll, I choose another feature. And then if I want to change my mind and see different options and different scenarios, then I need to come back up, change something, come back down, change some other things. It makes the configuration process a little bit clumsy. And also I don't see in one glance all of the choices I can make with the car. The way I would design that screen is that I would put the choices at the bottom. I would have all of the choices I have to make. Then I would see the impact of those choices just right above. So I would see the car, the color, its wheels and everything. And above that, I would display the different views for the car, the front, the side, the back, the interior view, the wheel view and everything. And as the choices are being made and played with, I would show the consequence in the summary, the price, the features selected, the estimated uh, delivery date and everything so that the user only has one place to see all of the impact of its choice. So let's look at the screen. Yes, it's a little bit more cluttered, but I think it's worth it. There are advantages to putting a lot more things on the screen. You see everything that you can choose in your car. So you see that you can choose between a Model S and a Model S Plaid, and you see within these two choices, some information that can help you make that choice. Not all of the information, but some of the information. And then you can pick the color, you can pick the wheels, you can pick the interior color, and then the autopilot, which is a very important feature that can cost a lot of money. 
Then as I play with the choices at the bottom here, I can see the resulting impact on the look of the car. And then I have different views of the car. And then on the right, I see that I've chosen a Model S, the range, the top speed, acceleration. I see what I have selected. And then I see when I can get that car and the price. And when I am happy with that, I can click here and go to the Tesla shop section. Let's play with this a little bit. As you might already know, I am a blue kind of guy. So I can click here and here I already see the prices of each color. So I don't have to click on all colors and see what are their prices. I see it right away. So blue is 1500 bucks more and the price is being updated automatically here. I think that the 20 inch wheels are look so much better. And then if I want to take a look at the car, then I see that I can choose the views I want to have here when I configure the car. I can choose a side view, a wheel view, interior view. So I can play with this and I can look at the car that I am configuring. Next, if I'm not sure if I want to uh, choose a Model S versus a Model S Plaid, I can click on this little information icon here, which is going to give me more information about the car. So then I see that the Model S Plaid can maintain a thousand plus horsepower all the way to 200 miles per hour. Okay, that's interesting. And I see that there's torque vectoring in here. So Tesla should be putting information that people will find useful to make the decision. We should not be talking about the sound system, the displays in the car. This should have been addressed before. Here I'm focusing on Model S or Model S plan. That's it. The same thing for the autopilot. I can click here and get more information about the autopilot, the basic autopilot. What does it contain? This is free. This is free. This is included. What does it do? Then enhanced. What does it do? It does four different things and the full self-driving. What else does it do? If I click on the information icon next to the price, then I get this financing selection cash, lease, and everything. And if I choose lease, then I see that the car is 1576 a month. And then because I have all of the choices right there without clicking, then I can play back and forth. So I can say, okay, right now the car would cost me 1576 a month. If I go with the plaid, that's 2000 a month. Okay. That's a little bit too expensive. I am going to go back to the regular model S, but then in terms of autopilot, if I go to enhanced, Enhanced Autopilot, 1672 a month. That's interesting. Full self-driving, 1800. Okay, that's a bit much. 1800. And what was the Model S Plaid? It was 2000. If I go Enhanced, 1600. Full self-driving, 1800. No, I think I'm going to be good with the 1600. So let me do a, a review here. So I have the regular Model S. It's blue. Yeah, okay. I can see it's blue. I can see the wheels. I'm going to keep the interior black. And then I'm going to choose the enhanced autopilot, everything 1672 a month. Okay. It sounds good. I would pay 1555 after potential saving. Okay. That's it. Next. And this is where Tesla could be showing the wall connector, the mobile connector, the summer wheels. If I want to have the summer tires, as well as the winter tires, I should be able to uh, select them there and then see the summary getting updated. And then at the end, I can just pay with the regular process that they have right now. This is a little project that I did. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you want to watch me analyze Tesla stock every single day based on technical analysis, you can do so right here. So thank you. And I'm going to tell you à la prochaine.